Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, in today's middle game video, I'm going to talk about a very important subject, which is you know, crucial for playing chess better, and it's also a great training method with, with which you could improve uh, significantly, and that's evaluating chess positions, evaluating middle game positions specifically. Now, uh, there are two things you need to do during the game constantly. One of them is uh, calculation, and the other one is evaluation, or in other words, one of them is analysis or uh, assessing dynamic things, uh, calculating specific moves and analyzing variations which could help you gain an advantage. And the second one is evaluation, which is sort of uh, a static counterpart to analysis because it doesn't revolve around specific moves or specific uh, ideas but it uh, helps you get an understanding of what the position is about. And I think that it's crucial to uh, assess the position and evaluate the position throughout the entire game to be able to uh, find good moves quickly. Now, I have divided uh, this process into four parts. I have already made videos on the first three parts. I will link them in the description below. So after you have assessed or evaluated the position, then you are going to be able to find strategic plans uh, in the game. After that, you are going to conclude which are your candidate moves. And lastly, you are going to go to calculation and to specific moves. So I think that the thought process during a game should be first try to evaluate the position and that's uh, find out which side is better and by how much better and why. And once you know that, it's not like uh, humans are not engines and we are unable to say white is winning, black is winning, it's a draw. Of course, you can say that in a king and pawn ending if you are good at end games, but usually we can't say that. So we need to create patterns which we are going to be able to recognize, which are going to uh, bring us to an evaluation of a position. So I think that once you find out which side is better and why, or uh, if the game is equal in your opinion, that's going to give you ideas about which plans you should create and which plans you should follow. Uh, there are several things to consider. Firstly, I would like to mention that, of course, it's uh, very hard to do this on every move. It's completely useless to do that in the opening because you know the theory or you should know the theory. I think that this process should be applied, uh, firstly, when you get out of book, when you get out of your preparation, when the opening ends and the middle game starts, because often then you won't have a clear plan of what to do and you are going to have to assess the position to find out what your setup, piece setup is going to be, what kind of pawn structure you want to go for, which, what kind of piece activity you want to enhance in your position, etc. Uh, the second uh, time you need to do this uh, in a game is when exchanges are about to happen. Uh, usually the basic rule you have to follow is that if you are material up, it's okay to exchange. Uh, the second thing is that if you have more space, than your opponent, if your opponent has less space, then uh, trading minor pieces is going to be good for him because whoever has more minor pieces and more space is going to have a superior position. Some of these rules are easy to follow. For example, if your opponent is attacking you, then you would like to exchange the queens to dampen his attack. But those are just general, ru general rules. But in any case, whenever an exchange is about to happen, I think you should be evaluating the position. Evaluate the position before and after, if you can choose whether you want an exchange to happen. So if your opponent offers a trade of dark bishops, how are my dark squares after the trade? Whose dark squares are weaker? If your opponent offers the trade of knights, would his knight be uh, better than mine if we left them on the board, etc.? If he wants to trade the rooks on the open file, if I trade the rooks, then who is going to have the file. So you need to evaluate the position in order to be able to come to a right conclusion about whether you should trade or not. Uh, the third thing and one of the most important things is changes in pawn structure. Whenever uh, you have a you have an opportunity to create a change in the pawn structure, you need to evaluate the position before and after. What's going to happen if I do this? What's going to happen if I play this pawn break? What's going to happen, happen if I play Ampassan? What's going to happen if I capture this pawn, etc. And lastly, uh, whenever you see dynamic chances on the board, if you see a tactical opportunity, if your opponent uh, has a tactical opportunity, whatever, if there are dynamic opportunities for something uh, very important to happen, before it happens, before you do it, or before you give your opponent a chance to do it, do a before and after evaluation. What will happen if he does this? How is the position if he does this? How is it if he doesn't do it?
okay so i think these four so uh, once you enter the yeah i'm sorry w one last thing uh, you should also do that uh, when you're about to enter the end game because evaluating a position before going into an end game is one of the most important things and especially king and pawn end games which are either winning or drawing and you need to know that uh, you need to be aware of what, what sort of ending you are entering. For example, if there are queens and rooks on the board and you have a chance to trade it off, you need to do a, pre, uh, a before and after evaluation to know whether the pawn, uh, king and pawn ending is going to be better or worse for you. So these five. When you trans transition from the opening to the middle game, when you transition from the middle game to the end game, when exchanges are about to happen, uh, when there are changes in pawn structure, and when there are dynamic chances for either side and tactical opportunities. Those are the critical positions, and I think that uh, position evaluation should be done when the position is critical and not when you can just play knight to f3 or do something simple. Okay, uh, which are the factors to evaluating a position? Uh, the first and the most important one is material, so this is a critical position I chose. This is the game Keres uh, Donald Byrne from San Antonio 72, a very, uh, a very famous tournament. Played after Bobby Fischer became world champion, but he didn't play. He came as a spectator. Uh, so, uh, in this position, this is move 20. Uh, Black has just played queen to d7. Uh, let's start evaluating. The first thing is material. Both sides have queens, both sides have two rooks, both sides have two minor pieces, knights and bishops. The pawn uh, situation, black has six pawns, white has six pawns. So material is equal. The second thing, king safety. Now when it comes to king safety, and by the way, don't mess up counting material, I, I've done that once. Uh, king safety, when it comes to king safety, you want to look at uh, four things. The first thing is the pawn structure around your king. Obviously, if uh, this bishop weren't here, then this pawn structure would be weak because there are some dark squared weaknesses. Uh, pawn structure is very important. Uh, if you can keep your kingside pawns intact, that will usually mean that your position is much more solid. If you move the white pawn to g4 and the other one to h5, then the pawn structure around the white king is horrible, so white's king would be less safe. In this position, I would say that the white king is slightly safer, because of the following. The second thing you need to look at are defenders. The black king has one defender, the white king has two defenders, so the white king is safer. Uh, potential pawn storms, uh, I would say equally bad. Uh, black could play g5, white could play g4, h4, h5. And attackers. Uh, when it comes to attackers in this position, nobody really has that many. I would say that this bishop is wonderful around the black king, so that makes the black king unsafe, especially because uh, you can create a plan of bishop e5 and exchanging the bishop. So I would say that the black king is less safe, but slightly less safe, because he has a slightly worse pawn structure around it, and it has one defender less, and it's attacked but by, by the bishop and the queen, so the black king is, is, is in more trouble. Uh, the third thing you want to look at when evaluating the position after you have been through material and king safety, which is the most important, is peace activity. <clears throat> the fourth thing which I'm going to do, I'm going to do these two together, is the pawn structure. And in this position you can see that white's pawn structure is definitely worse than black's. When you look at pawn structure you want to look at five things. The first one is pawn islands. A pawn island is an island of pawns. Black has two. So whenever you have connected pawns, this is a pawn line, island. Black has two pawn islands. One pawn island of two pawns, one pawn island of four pawns. White has three pawn islands. Three pawns here, one pawn here, two pawns here. So whichever side has more pawn islands has more weaknesses. That's always a rule. Because if you look at the basis of the pawn chains, of the pawn islands, they're always easier to attack. In this case, this pawn is weak, these two pawns are weak, and black only has two weaknesses. Uh, on e7, which could be moved easily, uh, and on uh, and on a7. The next thing you want to look at is whether you have isolated pawns, backward pawns, doubled pawns, or hanging pawns. In this case, white, unfortunately, has an isolated queen's pawn, and he also has two doubled pawns on the b-file, which are also isolated. So white's pawn structure is horrible. Now we come to peace activity. Obviously, black has a better pawn structure. That means that if you enter an endgame, especially a king and pawn endgame, black is simply going to be winning because black's king is going to be able to stop these pawns, these pawns easily and win them. 
piece activity has to compensate for that. So you need to do these two things together. Often uh, the position is going to be imbalanced and piece activity is going to compensate for pawn structure. Those are dynamic and static advantages or weaknesses, whichever way you look at it. Uh, piece activity is obviously dynamic because if I move my queen to, to e2 and to f1 f and my knight to b1 and I don't know, my bishop to c1, then I have uh, given up my piece activity and my pawn structure static uh, weaknesses still remain. So it's clear that in this position as white, you need to play dynamically, you need to use your chances and you must not trade pieces. Okay, and the last thing is threats. Uh, this is a dynamic uh, feature of, of a position which you always need to assess because it's really not important whether you have an isolated pawn if you miss, que uh, if you miss uh, queen mating you. It's really not important if you uh, lose a piece or lose a pawn or whatever. So threats are what you have to look for as well and look out for. So these five things should bring you to a conclusion who, uh, about who is better. Material we said is equal. Uh, king safety slightly better for white. Peace activity better for white. Uh, pawn structure much better for black. Threats, I wouldn't say there are any uh, clear threats for either side. And I would say that this position is equal. Um, all things considered, I think it's, it's about the same. Now, uh, if you turn on the engine, and you can do that after you evaluate a position, uh, you can check your thoughts. This position is completely equal. Now, if I, I did analyze the position before, uh, and I'm sorry about that, but I just wanted to show you a good example. Uh, in the third example, I'm going to take a random game and uh, show you my training method for evaluating the positions. We are going to do that in one bit. Uh, let me talk about the, the training method. What I do uh, to improve my position evaluation, I will take any random game, put it on move 20, move 21 for white, and try to do the same thing. Most often they're going to be boring, and most often there isn't going to be much going on, but this will help you adapt to your opponent's moves. Obviously, when you put a random position on move 21, you didn't play the first 20 moves, so you have no idea what's going on. Uh, the same will ca happen very often when your opponent makes a move you weren't expecting, and you're going to have to do the same thing because the whole position changed because of one move. So I think that this training method really helps. Take a random position, set it on move 20 or 21, take a notebook and try to find an evaluation. After you do that, check yourself with an engine. When I started, I would miss by 0.7 to 1 uh, usually, and I would be very much off. But now I usually get it within half a pawn, and uh, that's that's quite okay. I think it's important to know whether you are, you are better, worse or equal in a position. Okay, uh, the last thing before we move, move on to the two games I wanted to show you and the random game I'm going to pick. Uh, let me just repeat the process. Once you start an evaluation, uh, consider these five things. Material, king safety, peace activity, pawn structure and threats. After you have come to a conclusion, you need to create plans accordingly. So, when I look at this position for white, I know that my plan is to keep my pieces as active as possible. To weaken the black king even more, I would definitely like uh, to exchange this defender because that would mean that there are no defenders around the white king. And I will have to play quickly because my pawn structure is horrible. So moves I would consider here. Uh, yeah, I, I need to be worried about m one more thing. Black's piece activity is sort of uh, worse than white's, but if black manages to play the move knight to f5, then black is going to be uh, better, and he will also be threatening knight to d4, which makes me, which makes it much harder for me to double the rooks. So one move I would consider is g4. The other move I would consider is bishop to e5, trying to trade off this defender. If black plays f6, then his pawn structure is just horrible. So my position evaluation led me to a plan. Now I have a plan. I want to exchange defenders, play dynamically, and stop Black's counterplay. Uh, this is the point at which you move on to step three, finding candidate moves, and then you calculate the candidate moves. Once again, I will link the, the, all three videos, creating plans, finding candidate moves, and cal uh, how to calculate variations in the description below, so you can uh, follow the, the whole four-stage process. Okay, so Keres Burn, San Antonio, 1972. In this position, uh, uh, I think Paul Keres uh, understood everything I just told you. I mean, of course he did, and he had similar plans to mine. Um, in this position, he played Rook to A4, uh, which I'm not so sure about. It's an active move transferring the Rook to G5, to G4, I'm sorry, if needed, or to H4 or to F4. So. 
it's a very active move, but that's not the first move I would consider. I would definitely play bishop to e5 because I think it's very hard for black to respond to that. Or I would consider the move g4. After the move g4, I've just stopped black's counterplay and I'm going to play bishop to e5. I mean, I'm not sure what black plays. Uh, it's really hard for black to create plans and I think his best plan is what uh, Donald Byrne did play in the game, trying to advance his pawns. And uh, I think rook to a4 sort of... Uh, isn't isn't active enough and isn't following the plans enough. Uh, Burn played rook ac8. G4 was played now by Paul Keras, stopping knight f5. A5 was played, which is a good move. Uh, bishop to e5, and now Paul Keras did play uh, both the moves, and now I'm really happy, and I think this position is now better for white. Uh, rook c5. Uh, rook to f4, transferring the rook to f4, and now it's already starting to look scary. Uh, White is following his plans, playing dynamically, bringing all of his pieces into play and trying to stop the black counterplay. Now if you if you turn on the engine now, it will say that black is slightly better, which is, uh, I think, a mistake. Uh, if you are a human, you need to follow human plans. It's really hard to see 40 moves in advance and find out why black, uh, the engine thinks black is slightly better or equal. I think from a human's perspective, this is much easier to play. In this position, Burn took we have rook takes c5, and now you have three very strong pieces around the king, and there could be a lot of trouble in this position. In this uh, in this position, Burn went slightly wrong. He played b5, trying to remove the knight and advance his pawns. Uh, we have queen to e3, attacking the rook, queen to c7, defending, rook to f3, uh, defending everything here. And now b4, which uh, I think is slightly overextending the pawns. Of course, he wants to push through here and try to create a passed pawn, but this now allows knight to e2, and now white is already slightly better. Um, in this position, yeah, I, I think a4 is just, a4 is a blunder, I mean, it's completely losing now. After knight to e2, he should have played king to h7, simply defending the pawn. Now, you can already see how uh, exchanging the defender weakened the pawn structure, and now that the queen has transferred to e3 after queen c7, after, uh, after b5, he was already looking at this pawn, and after queen to e3, attacking the rook, queen to c7, rook, rook to f3, defending this rank and attacking the pawn, he should have reacted to, to the threat, but he played b4, attacking the knight, knight e2, and now still, I, I think king to h7, okay, you are going to run into tactical problems because there are too many rooks around your king, but a4 is just horrible. Okay, uh, in this position, uh, we have queen takes h6, and now just uh, a3, and here we come to another critical position. Uh, this is when there are dynamic opportunities in the game uh, and other assessments. So the first one I did at move 20, now I'm going to do one because it's a critical position. Black played a3. So in many positions, black is threatening to just take and queen the pawn, we check. Uh, on the other hand, uh, black wants to play rook takes f7. And rook takes f7 is a serious threat. Let me just show you that. There are two moves that prepare rook f7. One of them is rook g5, because then it threatens checkmate. And the other move is knight to d4, which indirectly threatens all sorts of stuff. Let me just show you that. After knight to d4, if black does nothing, let's just give him a nothing move, queen to b7. Then rook takes f7, completely winning. Uh, you really can't do anything. Your best move is rook c1, just delaying checkmate. Uh, rook c1, king g2, queen d5, giving up the queen, rook d5, rook g1, giving up the rook. And now the point is, after knight takes f7, which, would, which could have been played immediately, you have queen g6 check, king h8, rook h5 check, knight h6, and checkmate. So this is a serious threat. Knight d4 is a serious threat, and it has to be parried. Otherwise, rook takes f7 just wins the game, because it threatens mate in one, it has to be taken, and this combination of queen and rook is going to checkmate. So, the second threat after a3 is rook to g5. So, let's say uh, rook to g5 is played and black once again does nothing. Uh, queen to b7. Now, rook f7 check. You still can't take with the knight because you have the same checkmating pattern. This is, in fact, mate in one now. So, rook c1 once again delaying checkmate and king g queen g7 checkmate. So, after rook g5, black will once again have to react. Uh, black has only one move... Uh, to play here, and that's the move queen to b7 in both cases. After the move a3, if white is too rash, knight d4 or rook g5, black can respond to both threats 
with the move a takes b2 threatening to queen we check in the variation with rook g5 it's actually a draw because you don't have enough attackers rook takes g6 f takes queen takes rook h8 and now just repeating moves and in the other uh, line after knight d4 uh, a takes b2 knight e6 b1 queening still nothing much going on in the position and this is just a draw so white obviously has to be careful it's a critical position uh, black just played a3 let's assess let's do an evaluation who is better okay material uh, two rooks for white two rooks for black queen and knight for both sides uh, six pawns for white five pawns for black white is a pawn up okay king safety one-sided completely the black king is dead peace activity one-sided white is much better pawn structure uh, it's better for black but it really doesn't matter in positions like this and threats who has threats uh, we have just assessed that black is threatening this and queening and white is threatening either knight d4 or rook to g5 so now that you keep this these two things in mind the conclusion is fairly simple white is much better the only thing you have to do is to stop counterplay so the very logical move b takes a3 happened and that's it now the thing is that after b takes a3 you're faster and after uh, rook to g5 a2 rook takes f7 a1 queening king to g2 there's nothing black can do and you are just lost and uh, in this position uh, Donald Byrne actually resigned. So we wanted to look at two critical positions in this game <coughs> because I thought it, it's a very good game. The critical position after a3 and uh, the critical position in the middle game after queen to d7. I wanted to look at that because this is the point at which Paul Keres started to create his plans. Stop counterplay with g4, not allowing knight f5. Defend the defender. Uh, I'm sorry, remove the defender with bishop to e5 trading of the dark squared bishop, putting pressure on h6, getting the rook into play, which was sort of weird, but okay, and I, I hope you managed to understand the plans. Okay, the next position, uh, a very fun game, Ivanchuk Vallejo Pons from the Istanbul, Istanbul Olympiad 2012. Uh, this is definitely a critical position, so let's assess. Uh, Material. Black has a queen and two rooks. White has a queen and two rooks. Black has a knight and bishop. White has a knight and bishop. Black has six pawns. White has six pawns. Material is equal. King safety. Uh, let's look at the defenders. Pawn structure better around the white king uh, slightly. Oh, actually, the pawn structure is better around the black king, but defenders uh, make it safer for the, white, for the white king, so the structure, I would say, is better for black. But the defenders definitely white white has two defenders uh, potential pawn storms uh for neither side i would say and attackers uh for neither side there aren't really any attackers around the kings but i would still say the white king is much safer because it has two pieces around it peace activity uh white has a very active rook on f2 white has a very active queen here uh, looking at this diagonal uh, white has a great knight on b3 the other rook is passive black on the other hand has a great great rook a sort of misplaced bishop one passive rook which is attacking the pawn but still nothing major and the semi-active queen so i would say that the peace activity is better for for white and now threats uh what are the threats what is white threatening uh I think that if black does nothing, white can simply bring his rook either to, to d1 or to c1 and try to play actively on these two files and then try to weaken uh, weaken the pawns this way. White also has some knight jumps with knight to c5 if black isn't careful and if he removes one of the defenders and then the b7 pawn could be weak and the e5 pawn could be weak. But I would say that there are no immediate threats. So I would assess this position as equal once again. I'm not going to check with an engine because I know it's equal. And now let's uh, try to think of a plan for black. As black here, you understand that you have... I'm sorry, I didn't look at pawn structure. Um, the pawn structure is better for, for white, definitely, because black has those two horrible doubled pawns on the B file and a very weak pawn on, on C6. But I think it's nothing major. It's almost equal. So as black here, the one thing you want to do is activate your pieces i would say that's a priority secondly this tension around the d5 square and the c6 pawn has to be resolved so I'm, i found the move which wasn't played in the game which i wanted to play immediately i just couldn't see anything better and the only thought i had in my head which made it really hard to assess this position was bishop to f7 
this move uh, brings my piece back into play, back into defense uh, and sort of holds on this tension and makes it impossible for white to play d takes c. So I think that bishop f7 is the is the best move. The best move for white would probably be a5, trying to open up the position this way, and after cd5, ed5, you still have this strong pawn. Uh, your, your, this weak pawn you can attack, you can play this move, and all of a sudden you have three attackers on the pawn, and in this position black would actually be equal. Uh, the second move is... Uh, c takes d5, simply resolving the tension, and after e takes d5, rook a c8, chasing the queen away, queen h4, nothing major in this position, you retreat the bishop at you and you are fine. However, um, Vallejo pawns misjudged the position completely, he played rook a to c8, which just allows too much activity. Rook c1, knight b6, attacking the queen, queen c5, Queen takes c5, knight takes c5, c takes d5, and now the point of the combination, uh, why this move was bad. Bishop to h3, attacking the rook, and now black's position is losing. Uh, you can't play rook to c6, uh, trying to keep your rook active, because rook uh, c to f1, threatening mate, and after this happens, you are losing. So after bishop h3, he played rook to a8, a5, not even taking this pawn, knight c4, Knight takes b7, uh, rook f8, rook takes, rook takes, ed5. You can see that white is completely winning. So let's go back to the critical position. After d5, in positions like these, you need to be extra careful. You need to understand uh, the position. You need to fi uh, find the correct plan. So according to our uh, position evaluation, we know that black has less active pieces and the worse pawn structure. That means that you have two weaknesses, sort of. The engines are going to say that it's equal, but from a human perspective, you have two weaknesses. This is why you need to activate your pieces and dissolve the weaknesses in the pawn structure. I think uh, that bishop to f7 is a very logical move. Okay, uh, one last thing I would like to do, I would like to show you my training method. And uh, I didn't choose a game for this, I'm just going to go to chessgames.com and take any random game. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, two players. Uh, Sokolov and Ivanchuk. I guess they play the game sometimes. Find games. Let's just take uh, okay Linares. This game Ivanchuk won. Let me just uh, copy paste the the game into Liches. Uh, bam bam bam. Okay, import, and we go to move twenty. Okay. Black just played queen e6, and this is how I will train. Uh, I will take any random game, play move 20 for, for black, and try to find the move for white. Uh, let's evaluate the position. <clears throat> Material. Black has a queen, white has a queen. Uh, both sides have two bishops and two rooks. Both sides have five pawns, so material is equal. King safety. Uh, okay. Pawn structure around the king... Uh, I would say better for black, because black still has the dark squared bishop, so the fact that he played g6 isn't a liability. Uh, the pawn structure around the white king is slightly dubious, because this is the last defender, and this bishop is tremendous. Uh, potential pawn storms for neither side. Attackers, black has a very strong attacker uh, near the white king. White also has one, but it's not... Uh, as significant. Both can be traded immediately, so I would say that both kings are relatively safe. Peace activity. Uh, I would say better for white. The bishops are equally active, the queens are equally active, but white has much better rooks. So I would say slightly better for white. Uh, pawn structure equal. Maybe better for white, because white has a pawn majority on the queen side. Yeah, I, I think the pawn structure is better for white because white can uh, easily create a passed pawn, whereas black can't because the kings are here, so it's going to be much easier for white to catch the passed pawn if black ever manages to create it. And threats. Uh, obviously, one threat is uh, queen takes pawn. Uh, so black just played queen from b6 to e6. Uh, Another threat, yeah, I think black just stopped one threat, because the move queen to e6 stops queen to h3. If, uh, let's go back to this position. If black didn't play this, uh, the, let's say black plays something stupid. Uh, is queen to h3 a threat? Perhaps, perhaps you're forced to play f6 at some point, that would weaken you too much. So the immediate threat is here, white is no longer threatening queen to h3. 
Am I threatening anything else? Uh, I can try and remove the defender with bishop to f6 and then play on the dark squares, but I don't, don't think that's nothing major. Perhaps I can try to play bishop to g4 and then I have uh, a lot of stuff looking at the queen and where does the queen actually go? The queen can go here, here, here or take the pawn, so no. So I don't think I'm threatening anything. So I would evaluate this position as roughly equal, but very complicated. Uh, I hope I don't go badly wrong. I'm going to turn on the engine to see the evaluation. Uh, okay, let's go once again. Material equal. King safety equal. Uh, pawn structure better for white because he can create a pawn majority, but that won't be relevant until the late middle game or, or end game. Peace activity equal. Slightly better for white because of the rooks, but not that much. The rooks aren't really doing that much. Threats, the queen is threatening to take the pawn. Uh, in this position, uh, who is playing this game? So uh, Sokolov and Ivanchuk. Sokolov played b3, defending the pawn. Okay, let's see the evaluation. Uh, it's okay. Okay, plus 0 0.2. I was correct. It's equal. All zeros. Yes. Okay. Uh, it wasn't very very hard, I think, and uh, I could have chosen a harder game randomly, but I guess I was lucky. Uh, and yeah, I just wanted to show you this so that you can see what I do. I will try to take as many positions as possible and just practice my evaluation because when I do this during my training, it's going to be much faster and much easier to do during a real game. Okay, everybody. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I would just like to say one thing. Uh, thanks for everybody who has been supporting me. Uh, thank you for uh, subscribing and letting me reach 10,000 sub subscribers. This was really a great achievement for me. I couldn't have done it without you guys. Thank you for all the support, all the comments uh, and all the... Well, I, it was really helpful to, to, to read what you wrote and it helped me push on. Uh, thanks very much. I hope you liked the video. Stay tuned for more chess and see you very soon. Bye-bye.